I'm Tim Morrison for Time, and this is 10 Questions with Al Roger. Thank Hi, you Tim. for joining us. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, now, in addition to being the weather anchor for the Today Show on NBC and the host of Wake Up With Al on the Weather Channel, you found time to write a book, yes. uh, The Morning Show Murders. Uh, and our first reader wants to know, uh, what inspired you to write a mystery novel? I have always uh, loved mysteries. Uh, I, from when I was seven years old, got the Hardy Boys, you know, the uh, House on the Cliff. Uh, and then I graduated to Sherlock Holmes and Edgar Allan Poe, and, and it just continued. So, you know, in the back of my mind, I always thought someday I'd love to write a murder mystery. But it's still, it's based on a, on a morning TV show. Based on a morning uh, TV in New show. York, so it's kind of right and, what and, you know. And, and the chef is, is uh, African American. Uh, a little on the stocky side and bald, so uh, which pretty much cuts out uh, Will Smith or <laughs> or Jamie Foxx playing me in the movie. Is there someone on the Today Show you want to murder? Is this? I a do not <laughs> want to murder anybody that I am currently working with. So uh, and uh, no, I, there's I mean, you know the the great thing is I love the folks I work with, and and you know in the in the book the executive producer gets it. Uh, I I do not want to kill my executive producer even if he continually cuts me on time and you know takes the best donuts before the show <laughs> i will i do not want to kill him terry reeves who lives in metropolis illinois writes uh you metropolis like metropolis Wait a minute. her name her last name is reeves, reeves and she lives in metropolis wow uh, and she's a big fan. She says you seem like a, I'm assuming it's a she, it could be a guy. Could be a guy. Uh, you seem like a sincerely friendly, easygoing guy. Uh, what ticks you off? Uh, you know, the same things that everybody gets ticked off about. You know, rude behavior, uh, uh, you know, things not working right. Uh, you know, just the, the normal, everyday stuff. Uh, I, I, I'm always kind of uh, uh, amused when people say, you, you know, you, you never seem to get upset. You know, I, I don't know. I call it a hunch. But I think the grumpy weatherman isn't something that's going to really play very well. You know, it's kind of like the character on, uh, 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 what is it, Family Guy. You know, Ollie Williams and the Black You Weather Forecast. Gonna rain! You know, that, it, that, it's good for three seconds. And, and after that, it gets tired, I think. Well, what's uh, the best thing about being a weatherman? And this is a question for you from the Philippines, actually. Ah, from the Philippines, where they have typhoons. Um, you. The best thing about, you know what, the, your job, you, you, you always, you've got job security because there's always weather. You know, unless you live in a dome, you know, and at that point you've got other problems, uh, uh, you know, the weather's always changing. So every day it's different. Every day there's something to talk about. And this is a question from John Durant in Duval, Washington. Uh, what aspects of meteorology interest you the most? Uh, the ones I don't understand, which is most of them. No, I, you know, <laughs> I love clouds. I love looking at clouds. I mean, they're, they're just, especially when you're in the air uh, and you look at them and you, I mean, they're just the, the, for, the different formations and the, the color gradations and they, they I mean you can look at the, to me you can look at them endlessly and we had a question from uh, Margaret Gill Martin in Austin New York ah uh, sing sing you mentioned the big this? house house of many doors uh, she doesn't specify uh, we don't know that she's in the prison don't know that she's in the prison okay um, but she's I'm sure you're not. Uh, she wanted to ask about your childhood in in Queens yes right? uh, and do you feel that your family and community uh, helped contribute to your success oh sure and if yeah. so how yeah I mean I think uh, especially back in the you know the 60s uh, I mean we I we, you know you everybody knew everybody uh, uh, and if you were an odd child, as I was, you know, you weren't ostracized, you know, they would, oh, little Al, you know, and then I'd walk away and they'd go. Uh, but, you know, they, they were, uh, they, everybody supported everybody else. So, uh, and, and I, I, I am really thankful that I grew up, you know, that I had this, you know, lower middle income background uh, because, uh, I, I think it, it makes you hungry. My motivation was, you know, I was never going to share a bedroom with a sibling again. And if I wanted a second or third scoop of ice cream, by God, I'm going to get it. And I'm not, if I want to leave something on the plate, I'm not going to hear about hungry kids in China or Africa again. And uh, I don't know, uh, you know, what motivates today's generation of kids. Yeah, but but that said, 
I, I wouldn't change, trade my childhood for the, for the world. My mother reminded me that, uh, uh, this was a few years ago, that I, I was fascinated by television from a very early age uh, to the point where I would describe television shows that were filmed as shows that were wet and f shows that were live or on videotape as shows that were dry. Uh, when I was 10 years old, I figured out how to get the back of the TV off, connect wires to the leads of the speakers, and ran them into a 3M woolen sack reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder that my dad had bought from the depot. And I would record the audio of TV shows and create my own show. So I would splice uh, Batman and Superman together. And I bring this, 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 this is before the days of really portable. So it was like a 50 pound tape recorder. So I'd bring it up from the basement and go, mom, listen to this. I put together Batman and Superman. And I could see, now I look back and I saw the, I could see fear in her eyes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just thinking, oh my God, this child will be 50 years old and living with us. Now, in terms of celebrity, and we did have uh, several questions from this uh, on this from the readers, the uh, Spencer Pratt and Heidi Montag interview, yes. uh, and the ensuing Twitter um, events. Uh, Spencer Pratt's now apologized, I think, for the things he said. Uh, how, how did you feel while all this was going on? Don't care. Don't care. Not really. I mean, look, here's the thing, uh, in all seriousness. I've got my health, I've got a beautiful family, I've got a great job, um, and, and, and I wish that for everybody. You know, and uh, I hope that uh, uh, the aforementioned couple find their happiness and find what they, they're looking for, because they're obviously looking for something.